Hi, and thanks for coming to my channel and watching another video from Pro Audio Development. Today we are going to talk about um, polarity invert cables or uh, phase invert cables, however people want to say it. A polarity invert cable actually creates a phase change. And you can't adjust your phase angles. All you can do is flip it 180 degrees with the cable. <clears throat> and why do you want to do that? Well, that's a good question. So, I'm going to do a little cartoon drawing here for you. I'm going to try to hold the camera. <clears throat> Excuse me. And uh, what you end up with, let's say here is your snare drum. Because this is the most common use for it. And then you've got a microphone here. And let's say you've got a microphone here. Now, it doesn't matter too much which way the microphones are placed. All we're worried about is this is the head that gets smacked. Okay? So what happens is you strike the snare with your drumstick. And the first cycle goes this way. So what happens is the sound or the wave is going to go away from the microphone and towards one microphone. So you got to imagine that, let's just say that this wave is going in here and it's kind of trying to go away from this mic. This is the theory, okay? So what happens is when you hit something, it vibrates, okay? So you've got this head of the snare and it's actually wobbling as it's vibrating. And you see here these peaks and valleys. <clears throat> Well, when the, the head comes up, then your sound is, theoretically is going in the mic this way. When it goes down, it's going this way. So, but what you want to do is you want to find that starting point, the very beginning of the point where this head starts moving. So when you strike it, you would see the signal going into the microphone this way. So what I do when I mix sound is I actually will polarity invert the top microphone. I've gotten a lot of heat over that. They say, no, it's the bottom mic. But try it sometimes. Polarity invert the top mic as well as your toms. Invert the top mics. Anywhere that the, the head or the skin of the snare or the toms go away from the mic first, invert that mic. It's just like the kick mic. When you look at your bass drum, <clears throat> okay, little kind of crazy looking bass drum there. When the beater goes in and hits the drum, the, the head, if you've got a microphone in here, then the sound is going into the mic first. Well, a lot of people say, you know, polarity invert the inside mic. Well, I don't. If I run a sub kick, a lot of times I will I will invert the sub kick because the diaphragm, all a sub kick is, is a speaker inside. And if you look at the way it is, if you have positive on the speaker, the speaker will drive outward. So, you actually want to polarity invert the sub kick and don't polarity invert the inner mic. Well, actually, I'll swap between the two. I'll turn it off on here, off on here, off on, till I get the best sound. Now, the theory is one thing, but practicality is another. So, when you're actually got all the mics set up and you got the drummer playing, just tell them to play, flip the, in, fl flip the polarity or the phase button, it'll be like this on the mixer. When you see that button, you'll hit that button, like on the bottom mic, <clears throat> hit the button on the bottom mic, listen to it, leave it on, hit it on the top mic, listen to it, take it off the bottom mic while the top one's inverted and listen to it, and then take it back off again. Whichever combination sounds best, that's the way you run the show. Same way with the kick mic. Invert the inner mic, invert the outer mic. Correct the inner mic, you know, take the phase button off, and then take it off. Whichever way sounds best, run it that way. I found that most of the time, I'll end up with the negative as the input on the sub kick, which is the phase turned on on the sub kick and off on the kick mic. So, what exactly is this doing? Well, <clears throat> you can imagine, uh, we're going to run out of room here in a minute, but here's our zero line, and this is zero, let's say, volts, okay? When you first hit the head of the of the drum your wave does this that's one cycle <clears throat> so if you've got uh, a 40 hertz or a 80 hertz hit then you've got 80 of these in one second okay 
So what you're doing is if you've got a top and a bottom mic, then the top mic might be this one. Then the bottom mic might be this one. And so what happens is you get some cancellation there. You And if it's bad enough, if it's like stereo tracks and one side is polarity invert, the level will be real low. So when you hit this button, boom, you take this dotted line and make it this line. Now, I only drew this slightly off so you could understand that this would be mic number one, this would be mic number two. Okay. When you take that phase button off, then let's say mic number one becomes this again. So you're actually changing the wave that goes through the amplifier. Okay, so that's a basic you know, drawing on how this works, how the phase button works, okay, and how to use it. Um, won't do too much with vocals. <clears throat> if you get some uh, some snare or some drums coming through the vocal mic, sometimes you can hit this button on the vocal microphone and it'll cancel out the the sound coming from through the vocal microphone. But sometimes you find that if the singer is close to the source, it'll actually cancel out the actual microphone and the snare. What happens is and let's get another piece of paper here and I'm going to show you this is what's you ever heard of the three to one rule okay this is why okay like if you're here and this is your is your snare and let's say that the singer singing in the vocal microphone is standing right at the snare not observing the three to one rule this will be the signal that goes into the vocal microphone the farther away that the singer is from the source, the farther this line starts. Okay? So as long as you observe the 3 to 1 rule, you won't end up in this area. Now if the singer gets to a certain point and, and this happens, <clears throat> then you're okay. You know, it just, you get a little summation there. Okay? But as long as you're observing this 3 to 1 rule, then you won't run into any problems. So what that means is if you hit the phase invert button on the vocal microphone and the singer's far enough away, the farther he is from the source, the more this line shifts. And that's phase angle or delay. Okay, same way when you're aligning subwoofers. So just keep that in mind. Try it sometimes. Most of the time it won't work. Sometimes it does. Alright, now, what does all this mean? Well, what this means is you should have, if you do not have that phase button on your console, you should have a cable that you make. And this cable we're about to make is going to be called a phase invert cable. Okay, Label it phase invert because you do not want to put this in place for a standard cable. This is going to be one of those cables that you break out just for like top and bottom snare, inner outer kick mics. You get the idea. So, I'm going to use my Galaxy Audio and my cable tester to show you what we're going to do. Alright, so first, let me try to position the camera here a little better. Alright, so first, I'm going to take the balanced out of the Cricut, plug this in, and then I'm going to take the in. Alright, I'm going to set this low... And this is 2T. Okay, and make sure we got everything here. <clears throat> All right, let's get this set up. <laughs> yeah, I had to. Uh, if you noticed, and I'll show you in a minute when I pull, put the uh, Cricut back in place, I actually had to take this cable apart and repair it before I show you how to make a polarity invert out of it. Um, one of the wires had come loose and was shorted against the other. Is I don't know. It looks like someone yanked it out out of the stage box or whatever. That's what happens when you have band members and friends help you wrap your cables and unplug stuff. So anyway, let me quit griping. So here's our tester, and I just want to show you that pin 1 to 1, 2 to 2, 3 to 3. 
so we have a proper cable now. And if I were to take the Galaxy Audio Cricut, and we're gonna, this is the receiver. And I didn't put this back on because we're about to solder this. Okay. And then we'll take the sender. And we're going to have this on low. Put that. And it's going to start blinking. Okay. This is our send. So now put this on polarity. Okay. So when both green lights are lit, that tells me. And two to two is positive. Okay. If I flip that, that tells me three is the receiving pin. Two is the receiving pin. So this is sending on pin two, receiving on pin two. So we're good there. So now, let's unplug this and we'll turn that off. Now, let's see if I can get in here. This is my little soldering block. You can use your cable tester for the same thing. And I'll show you. Like you can prop this up. Where's, oh, there it is. And you can plug this in here. And it works pretty good. Um, sometimes it flops around. You can hold it up this way. You can flip it over this way. And you can work with it. Um, but I'm just, I'm used to my little handmade tool here. So we're going to plug this in here. And uh, I even cheated. I wrote the numbers on there. Pin 1, 2, and 3. I don't know if you can see that. I'm having to work around the camera. So what we want to do. You see if I can get this in here close. Is we actually want to come in here. And we're going to take pin 2. Over here. And desolder it. Desolder pin 3. And swap pin 2 and 3. And that's what we want to do. So I'm going to try to keep this in close <clears throat> as I do this. All right, let me move over here and uh, hardly ever zoom on this camera. And I think my hands are going to get in the way on this. Let me try to do that without getting in your way so you can see it. So I'm going to take my soldering iron, <clears throat> put a little dab of solder on it for heat transfer, and we'll grab this in three, touch, and ah, I can't do it without getting my hand in the way. Okay, see that? I pulled that loose. Okay, so now I can do it left-handed. You can see it. I don't know if I can or not. Grab a hold of the wire. All right. So there are the two wires disconnected. Let's see what your camera angle is. Okay. So now this one, we actually want to put on pin three straight up, and put the pin two over to this side. So let me see if I can do this and you see what I'm doing. And this works pretty good. You take your iron and uh, a little dab of solder on it. And I'm going to get it right at the top here and get it ready. Get under the cup. When it melts, push down and pull the iron away. Okay, that did pretty good. So now I'll get this close. Trying to get it where you can see it. Now the cup's a little empty, so let me add a little bit to the cup. There we go. Now, get it hot, melted, drop it in the cup. Then let go. Okay, so. Probably could have done a little better job on soldering that, but I'm trying whoop, I'm trying to get it to focus here. There we go. I could do a little better soldering job there. Because I was trying to do it without my hand being in the way. OK, 
Okay, so now we can go ahead and put our pieces together here. I'm trying to lean over and look at the camera to see if you can see this okay. Alright, so this goes like that. The camera focusing. Alright, so <laughs> oh, there we go. All right. Then, this is what I like about the nutrient connectors because as you tighten down, this part right here grips onto the cable real tight. And that's a great strain relief. The best strain relief I've seen yet. Okay. So, tighten this down. And then we'll zoom the camera out. So now start off with this tester right here and what we should have is we should have one to one two to three three to two is what we should have what's that guy say the turtle man live action right here this is where we see if it happens all right there's our one to one there's our two to three and three to two or two to three this way so now, the Galaxy Audio actually is doing a phase check. It actually does it with sound, okay? There's a switch on the back that does polarity or continuity. Polarity means it actually sends a sound signal through the cable. Continuity, it'll send an electrical signal, okay? Well, we just checked the continuity with that cable tester. So now let's do it phase-wise, the correct way. We're on polarity. We're on... 2T. We'll turn that on. That's the receiver. Here's the sender. We're going to go to balanced out. And then turn it on. Now we have pin 2 coming through with phase inverted. Polarity invert. If I go to pin 3, there's the green light. Pin 2. And that's how you do it. So now what you would normally do is you would take this cable and this is a you know a real long cable which is okay but typically on a polarity invert cable they're like two foot long uh, maybe three foot long and uh, they've got a label on it might say uh, POL 2 slash 3 I mean polarity sec pin 2 to pin 3 um, this is like a 15 foot cable so labeled the same way We'll do just fine as long as you keep up with your cables. So that's how you do a polarity invert cable for your snare, for your um, kick mic, uh, toms, whichever way you want to do it, however you want to cable it. Um, if you'll notice, like even like some of these old Mackie boards like this, there is no way to phase invert the channel. My new Allen and Heath does, but this one does not. So anyway. I hope this helps you out. Uh, if you have any comments or questions, please leave them in the uh, comment section below. You can come to my website, reekcperry.com. There is a blog on this, on uh, you know polarity invert. I think it's actually in the. Uh, oh shoot, I don't know. Just just search through all my blogs. It, I'd like I want you to read them all anyway. But somewhere there is one, and if it's if there's not, I'll rewrite another one or I'll bump it to the top. Either way. So anyway, uh, give me a thumbs up so that I know you like the video. Subscribe to my channel. And um, like I said, leave me a comment. What, what kind of videos do you want to see tech-wise on this DIY stuff? What, what kind of problems have you run into before? You know, maybe I can help you out. Thanks for watching. See you next time.